Welcome to a special edition of Way or No Way. This is going to be different from my other reviews since I'm standing up, of course. Another thing is because this book has just come out today, and already I find it absolutely repugnant. I it, it is absolutely the worst piece of elephant skin tags off its backside I have ever read. Not that I make a habit out of reading skin tags off an elephant's ass. But, uh, yeah. Uh, just to set up, uh, Joe Quesada, a.k.a. Mephisto, had set up that he's going to write a story that explains what happened to Mary Jane and Mephisto and Peter and all that other garbage from One More Day is going to explain what she whispered to Mephisto, is going to explain how they didn't get married, and and in this first issue, they do that, actually. In the first two pages, in the first two pages, they reveal what Mary Jane had said to Mephisto that everybody couldn't make out. Everybody just assumed it was, oh, uh, everybody but I will, everybody but I will forget. But it's, actually that's not what she says. That's not what she says. What she says is actually far worse. And it has very unfortunate implications about her character. And it tells a lot about Joe Quesada. At least to me it does. So, uh, the story is called One Moment in Time. You know, about one moment in time where Peter and MJ just part ways. And uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is where it uh, this is where it gets this is where it gets bad, very bad. Uh, the story starts off with the end of One More Day. Uh, it starts off with MJ beginning to make the whisper to Mephisto. And uh, what she says is, quote, I know Peter. Peter will never agree to the deal unless I ask him to do it. Here it says, I know Peter. He'll never, uh, he'll never make this deal with you. Never, ever, unless I ask him to. And if I do, this is the end of it. I'm trying to tell us something there, Joe. And you will leave him alone for the rest of eternity. You know how the devil likes to take little phrases and twist them around, and it's similar of all tricksters, really. <laughs> Leave him alone for the rest of eternity. Loaded. The story goes back to where, uh, in the brand new day present, where people have been saying that it's you know just fabulous and wonderful, and I've read a couple of, I've, re I've read a couple of stories, and some of the stories aren't bad. I will give them that. Some of the stories are not bad. Uh, this, this last one they had, Grim Hunt. That one was okay. That was pretty good. Uh, American Son. Harry finally beating the paste off of Norman. That. I like that one too. I mean, I'm ashamed to admit it as a person who thought One More Day was the absolute worst dreck in comic book history. I will freely admit that American Sun was good. And I'll freely admit that Grim Hunt was good. Some of the issues that they've written were pretty good. That being said, it doesn't make OMD less a piece of donkey turds. I mean, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like with Roman Polanski. 
Sure, he directed Chinatown. Chinatown's a good film, but it doesn't stop him from being an alleged child molester. You know, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make that go away. Um, basically, what happens next is Peter and MJ in the brand new day universe, or as I like to call it, call it Marvel Fu. <laughs> they talk about how they had broken up, their relationship had turned sour, and MJ wants to be part of his life again, and Peter wants to be part of her life again, and you know, can't we all just get along, and all that other stuff. Stuff, I mean, really, stuff that stuff that they really even shouldn't be having this conversation about. Conversation about. Right away we cut to uh, something that, something I, I personally, I, I'll, I'll, I'll find it as, it's a bit of a sticking point for me. They took the issues, they took pages from the wedding annual, uh, Amazing Spider-Man Annual 21, and they interspersed it with the actual book, with with the with the with the storyline as it is, they took original artwork and stories from another book, cut it up, and then sewn on the new material like a tapestry of shit mixed in with the flesh of uh, off an ogre's nutsack. I mean, I know, I, I know that sounds physically impossible, but I mean, you never know these guys. We get cuts of uh, the annual where we see Spider-Man chasing down Electro, and the story takes the focus and they try to seamlessly blend it in but we know it's but we know it's new art it takes the place and focus on to a small time crook named Eddie who gets caught during the robbery uh, of Electro with his goons so they throw him in the paddy wagon or the cop car and he's, you know, doing the same old, you know, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Spider-Man, I'm gonna get you, copper. And he, and, you know, the cop, not thinking, you know, tells him his whole name. Yeah, way to go. Uh, then all of a sudden, a red bird, a red bird flies down and plays with the locks and helps the crook escape. Subtle! Yeah. Yeah, very, very, very subtle. <laughs> and, and I wish I was kidding. I wish I was kidding. It's about as subtle as an elephant with a jackhammer trying to pound his way through steel. I mean, you, you couldn't, you couldn't get any... I mean, it's bad enough that they're using the artwork from the annual that they got married in to cement his point. And, and if you bear with me, I'll explain that. Um, we cut to parts of the annual which shows Peter having doubts about marrying MJ. Now, from that perspective, from that past perspective, it's what many would consider cold feet. Every guy gets it. You know, every guy gets it at that point. And if you're lying and saying that you never got cold feet, you, you deserve an Oscar. That's all, I, that's all I can say. Every guy gets cold feet. I mean, if I ever find a woman who will be gracious enough to marry me, I imagine I'll get cold feet too. I imagine she will too. 
It's just, it's just, it's just the human nature of things. I mean, that part I don't mind. But in the context of the story, it's taking bits and pieces of the annual that Joe Casada, the writer of this story, agrees with. In, in, of course, you know, for those of you who don't know, he didn't want Spider-Man and Mary Jane together in the first place. He didn't want that. He thought that Spider-Man should always be young and hip and and should never grow old, like Peter Pan, except with except with spandex that covers the entirety of his body instead of just his legs. Oh. But going on, we see that the thug has found out about where the cop lives, the cop that arrested him. And this will tie in. This will tie in, I swear. It'll tie in in a horrendously stupid way, but I but it will tie in. Uh, he finds out from a mysterious employer, and and uh, and that sets and that sets up what will be perhaps one of the dumbest moments in this comic. But but we do need to move on. We get more stuff from the annual about a bachelor party that Harry and Flash throw for Peter. It's just those two since, you know, Peter don't have friends. And it all boils down to Peter expressing his doubts to Harry and Flash about not marrying Mary Jane. And Flat and Harry talks about how his marriage with Liz was, is, you know, all fine wine and roses and all that other stuff. I mean, look how they turned out. Uh, don't, don't, for, don't think I missed that. Don't, don't you dare think I missed that, that, uh, that meta pun there, Casada. Don't think I missed that. And Flash, Flash goes on about how, uh, how he ruined his relationship at the time. And Peter says, oh, well, that means you agree with me that me getting married is a big mistake. And Flash goes, what? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I says, I can go ahead. Well, no, he didn't say that part, but still, he, he goes on to say, like, no, I'd get married in a heartbeat if I could. I'd, it's like, if I had a woman that, I had a, if I had a woman like Harry's wife, I'd, I'd get married in a heartbeat. I think about it all the time. And, and really, it's it, like I said, taking the bits from the an, from the annual of the wedding, putting it over the story that he's writing, trying to create this narrative flow into the timeline, and basically screwing twenty years of continuity, and he's showing us a blueprint on how he did it. Well, I have to admire him for one thing. It does it does take a huge, huge, huge set of huevos to do this. It takes a huge set. Cutting back to new footage, we see Harry and Flash arguing, well, not really arguing, but going back and forth about how Peter and MJ, or how Peter has doubts about marriage, and Flash says he'll do the right thing, he'll show up, and and Harry says, oh, well, you know, he's marrying Mary Jane, who's this wild party girl, and true, in the stories, she was. She was written as a counterpoint to Gwen Stacy, who Stanley had originally wanted Peter to end up with. And then, you know, real life stepped in and said nuts to that. So, what are you going to do? 
and it's not like you can just retcon it everything with, uh, you know, some kind of deal with the devil. Wait a minute! But, uh, <laughs> seriously. Uh, we get another cut of Mary Jane at her bachelorette party. She, unlike Peter's bachelor party, with just Harry and Flash, she has a huge extravaganza filled with strippers and guys coming out of cakes, all ripped, you know, fashion models and all that stuff, you know, having the time of her life. And <laughs> one of her friends pulls over for a drink and she tells her, well, why? It's not like I'm dying or anything. And of course, being what this is, the friend tells her, in a sense, you really are. Yeah. Yeah, it's not very subtle. I mean, you can tell you can tell the subtlety of this thing, right? It's about as subtle as this. Yeah. It goes on to say that uh, you know, MJ is giving up a huge party lifestyle, but at the same time she won't have any lonely nights. Of course, this is lampshading the fact that uh, she's marrying Spider-Man. She knows she's marrying Spider-Man, which means that she'll have lots of lonely nights because he's off to save the city or off to save the world or just off, you know, because swinging's a lot of fun, I guess. Anyway, cut back to the present and we get more more filler about how Peter never meant to hurt Mary Jane and and how all this stuff was, you know, got in the way and whatever and, and it fades into a dream that he has, that Peter has, of of Mary Jane and his wedding. He's in his spider costume, which of course, in a dream makes no which in a, when a dream makes no sense. But then again, it's a dream, so I guess it's not supposed to make sense. Um, uh, has all the heroes in the back, and even a couple of villains on the side. Again, a dream, dream logic. All of a sudden, the villains capture the heroes, and Spider-Man has to fight all the villains, but he can't fight them all, and then. MJ gets caught in the crossfire, and... <laughs> yeah, and, and Peter wakes up in a cold sweat. Like, I mean, it's, it, 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 it reminds me of... It reminds me of uh, 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 Revenge of the Sith, when Anakin Skywalker wakes up in a cold sweat with a bristling chest. With, uh, with Padme next to him, except this time there's no Padme. It's just him, rippled and all, sweating, had a nightmare. Oh no. Almost at the climax of the book, Peter goes to the bridge where Gwen Stacy fell and is talking to a picture of her, saying that I love Mary Jane, I know you'd always be my girl, you know, but I love Mary Jane, I'm going to marry her, you know, tell me what to do, and all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden the timeline skews into this tangent, as Doc Brown would say. And the way the timeline skews is that he hears machine gun fire. Why is he hearing machine gun fire? Because the crook that he busted, along with that cop, earlier in the story, has come to get revenge on the cop. And he's shooting at the cop. Apparently he caught him when he was at home, in bed. And why the guy's not dead, I don't know. But anyway, he follows the cop to a rooftop. 
cop's wife follows, trying to save her husband. Spider-Man comes in, tries to break it up. As he's telling the policeman and the wife to get the frick out of Dodge, his fire sense goes off. All of a sudden, he gets hit with a cinder block, and he's dazed. And somehow, this guy, this one guy, manages to beat Spider-Man with a cinder block. A cinder block! That, that makes, that makes no sense. None whatsoever. I mean, his spider sense is tingling. Where does he think the danger's coming from? Where? I mean, it's not like he can just look around and see what's going on. And not only that, why didn't he just web up the guy when he when he when he when he when he left in? I mean, he he's been doing this for years. At that point, you'd think he'd know. But no, he's still dazed at this point, and he goes to chase the, the he goes to chase the killer. They both fall off the roof. They both off the roof. Now, Spider-Man, of course, instinctually shoots out a web. But what should happen? The web, the web doesn't latch on. In fact, for those of you who've actually seen the comic, the web doesn't latch on to anything. It's like a force field is on the fire escape. Huh? And then, all of a sudden, apparently Spider-Man forgets to shoot another one. He gets to shoot another one. I was like, okay, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. It's not rocket science. Hell, I could have done that. But no, no. He fails. The thug lands on top of him, knocking him out. Apparently for the whole day. <laughs> then we cut to the wedding day, where Mary Jane shows late, pictures from the annual, and there's the part where it looks like Peter might not show up. And in the original history, he does, with his shoes, in his hands. But this time, this time he doesn't. You know why? <laughs> because he's laying in a freaking alley because a bum fell on him! A bum who hit him with a cinder block! I mean, the guy can move faster than bullets. He can't dodge a fucking cinder block. <sighs> then it uh, cuts to Mary Jane walking away, and. Spider-Man somehow, in his dazed state, says, MJ, wait. And then we cut to the present time, where it says, to be continued. Yeah, apparently there's more. 
what did I think? First of all, Joe Quesada didn't throw Mary Jane under the bus. I want to say that plain and clear, he did not throw Mary Jane under the bus, no. He broke her neck, threw her into the street, and then drove the bus over her! Yeah, that's what he did. Now I understand what he was going for. I understand he was going for, she loves him so much that she couldn't bear the thought of him having so much guilt on him because he knew that Aunt May would be Aunt, Aunt May would die because of him. And that's a can. Of, that's another can of worms, you know. Aunt May dying because of him. That that's a whole other. That's a whole other ball of wax. But. Wouldn't she also understand that if she knew he would never say yes, she knew she'd also know that if he ever found out that she said yes, and and yeah, actually you know what the the whispering part the the part where she says Peter won't agree to it if I ask uh, unless I ask him to. That essentially tells me that Mary Jane had already made the deal. The deal was already done before Peter even had a chance to say yes. And you know that's BS. That's BS and you know it. It basically took all the responsibility out of Peter's hands. But then again, one more day, he wasn't really acting very responsible to begin with, so why not take that responsibility out of his hands, too? Another thing I really didn't like was the fact that they interspersed the wedding annual. <clears throat> why? Why are you going to drag the wedding annual into this? I mean, is it for... And not only that, it's it's not only that, it's scenes that show Casada's point of view. It's scenes that show the point of view that Spider-Man should never have been married. He and Mary Jane shouldn't be together. You know, marriage is death. Marriage is marriage is evil, icky, and painful. You know, married to a superhero. Who'd want that? You know? It's a life of constant fear, life of constant danger. I, I'm at a loss for how dumb this comic is. I, I really am. I, I don't know anybody anybody else who could possibly make 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 this uh, make this better. <laughs> this is this is just abysmal, absolutely abysmal. This this fails on so many levels, and it's only the first issue. That's the kicker. It's only the first issue. Now they're going to go into detail. They're going to go into detail why this had to happen. Or why it happened. Or, or because apparently Peter missing the wedding just wasn't douchey enough for MJ to leave him for good. And then, I think there might have been some foreshadowing. I might be wrong, but I think there was foreshadowing. Because according to this, according to the annual, it says there was a guy named Bruce. You know, a guy named Bruce apparently that uh, MJ liked. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, and it looks like that they're going to I, I don't know, maybe they won't, maybe they won't put in, you know, a whole thing of Mary Jane getting back at Peter for walking out of the wedding by cheating on him. 
I wouldn't put anything past them. I darn sure wouldn't put anything past them. And, I, and going back to the very beginning of this book with MJ talking about Peter never agreeing to the deal, one more day pretty much solidified, in my opinion, it pretty much solidified that Peter would chop off his own nuts to have Aunt May back. He'd sell, his, he'd sell his body to science to get Aunt May back. He would do anything, anything. He was behaving like a petulant child. I mean, hell, some of you probably think I'm behaving like a petulant child right now. And well, my response is pretty much Joe, respond, Joe Quesada's response to the audience. that it throws into question the things that she said after the deal was made it, it threw into question everything really <laughs> all that stuff about how if we're meant to be we'll be together or no force could tear us apart or anything like that I mean, was it all just bullshit? Was it all just, was it all just, you know, was it all just crap that she came up with just so she could get him to say yes? And, and, and really, at this point, I guess they're going to try and do, you know, the explanation about how everybody knew, how everybody saw him unmask it. They don't know who he is. I guess they're going to do something about that. I don't know. Um, of course, with one more, one more day, brand new day rules was that everything happened just... Peter and MJ weren't married, well then what the hell were they doing the whole time? Really, seriously, what were they doing? Like I told you, this wasn't a normal episode of Where No Way. It's definitely not as, definitely not as funny, because really, this isn't a laughing matter. This is the brutal violation of a well-known, time-honored character, again. This time they're taking, they're taking one more day, and they're adding a layer of stupid to it. Adding a new depth of dumb. And when I had first found out about it, about the twist actually, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. A, a friend texted me and said that, said that Mary Jane made the deal to ask Peter. So that being the case, what does Mephisto get in return? Her soul? And if it, if it really was the marriage that he wanted, then by his own rules, wouldn't both, both parties had to agree. Peter agreed because she asked him to agree. So... I mean, it still goes beyond the... I mean, it, the, the motivations behind it are still so... It's still so nonsensical and stupid. It, it doesn't even... It doesn't even bear repeating. 
I mean, for those of you who, for those of you who don't know, he uh, apparently he wanted their marriage. Uh, Mephisto wanted their marriage because it was a pure and pure love, and he wanted to take her away from something from God. I, I know it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Never did, never has, never will. But uh, my review of uh, of uh, Omit Issue One: No way in hell. No way in hell. I'll be keeping track of it, and and I'll I'll see if I can be keep making uh, keep making videos like this. I mean, maybe a little bit funnier, but still. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm working on other episodes, of course, uh, but like with comics, life gets in the way. I mean, sometimes you just want to take life and do a little, do a little magical hoodoo there and just say, bye-bye responsibilities. But hey, we can't all be Peter Parker, can we? See you next time, folks.